We have here our uh, our cam kit. Uh, this cam kit comes to us from uh, AMS Racing. This should be a uh, Texas Speed Stage Three Turbo Cam. Uh, for what it's worth, the pistons in our uh, in our 5.3 are stamped AER 1176.50, so they're half a millimeter overboard, which is uh, like 20 thousandths, which is not bad, right? That's uh, a little bit over. These are our uh, pack springs. They're. Uh, 1219 Texas speed push rods a little bit nicer than uh, the stock stuff even though it's brand new never been used <laughs> but these are what we're going to use this is the bump stick Texas speed for all you guys wanting specs on what we're building. This is the cam that we will be running in this LMF engine. We're very happy with the selection and we're sure it'll perform very nicely in this build. Okay. Going back together, uh, we want to get the cam slid back in. Uh, we want to lube up the cam before we put it back in. Lube up the new cam. Uh, there's a lot of different types of assembly lubes people can use, the things people can use for assembly lube. I, uh, for this right now, I'm just using some Lucas. It works. The reality is, is anything you do use for assembly lube only lasts for the first couple seconds. And as soon as the oil, uh, hits the sparing surfaces, it gets washed away anyway, so. And this motor was uh, already being run. I don't think they fired it, but uh, the fact that there was uh, a little bit of oil in it kind of tells a story that they were, uh, they were running it to make sure it wasn't making any noise or make sure it was a, a good build. All right, let's just get this cam in. Camshaft thrust plate goes back on. Uh, the camshaft thrust plate should always be changed. It should always be a fresh and new camshaft thrust plate installed because on the back side of the thrust plate it has these uh, it has this oil seal for the front of the, uh, the oil galleries. And when they get old and used, sometimes this, this is just flat and, and you know that that's not going to make a good seal. But this is brand new, right? It wasn't torqued down, but you can still feel the, the lip of the seal. So this, this is okay to reuse. They're M8 bolts, but uh, we're using a T40 Torx bit to tighten them with. Doing a torque wrench. If your camshaft thrust plate or retainer plate has hex head bolts, it goes to 18. If your camshaft retainer 
pipe has Torx head bolts like ours does, it goes to 11. step in all this for us is we want to use a different cam sprock. Okay, I'm not going to use it. All right. This is the cam sprocket that came with LMF. It's got a little phaser on it so it can slip its timing. This is the cam sprocket that came off the LS2. Nice three bolt, uh, four teeth on the front face for the cam sensor and uh, no VVT. Uh, you can buy the sprocket, buy a chain and stuff to go with it, but because of where we are and what we already have with the old motor, we're just going to transfer this on the new motor, and, and we're going to use the chain off the VVT. Uh, cranks down the right place. Chevy, uh, you just line them up, dot to dot. Dot to dot. We don't really care about the eye color link. In fact, I'm gonna flip it around, flip the chain around just so we don't have to look at an eye color link. Yeah. And then we need to clean up some bolts. I'm just gonna reuse some old bolts for the cam. Uh, if this was a high lift cam with strong valve springs, that would not be what I would be doing. But it's only a 550 lift, and we only got like packed 1219 springs going in, so they're just uh, single little beehive springs, just a little bit above uh, what the stock is. So uh, these bolts would be just fine. It is crucially important on these LS engines that the bolts and the cam holes are clean and oil free and that red thread locker, high strength uh, thread locker is used or the bolts will come back out over time. It's a tremendous amount of load that the cam goes on and this was a big thing on these, uh, on these motors. All right, so we use a healthy amount of thread sealant on very clean and dry bolts and then we run them in. These camshaft, these three camshaft bolts get torqued to 18 foot pounds, pound feet, whatever. And then we'll lie. Uh, actually two revolutions of the crank and just make sure that we line back up dot to dot and now we need to change our damper I am not happy with the damper that comes with uh, with this LMF engine uh, let me get that for you it is this damper Ironically, this was the same damper that came with uh, that came on on the blown up LS2. I don't know if that was right for the motor, but I, I, I'm not a big fan of this this setup. Uh, it's got a little spring tensioner. It's meant to push the the slack side of the chain into the sprockets a little bit more, but that's not what you see on the performance applications. On the performance applications, you get this. And we got this from, uh, this one we got from Mission Good Motorsports, but you can get it from anywhere. They're dirt cheap. It's just this little brick. Comes with new bolts. The bolts got little uh, washers to our rubber O-rings on precisely space. Or put this in a, in a very exact place. And uh, 
they're little M8 bolts, so we'll put them on and we'll torque this down to, uh, to the same 18 pound feet. These dampers are cool because if you look at them in the center, they have a little arrow. I know it's, it's not easy or it's not difficult to eyeball in the middle for lining up your dot to dot, but with this damper on, there's actually an arrow that points dead nuts to the center. And it's just, it's a nice little confirmation once this is on to, uh, to make sure your dots are lined up at the dead center point. And now our camshaft is installed. We need to take this off. I like this damper so much better. The other one has like a spring loaded part on it and it's just a really thin piece of plastic. And you know, being a mechanic, I only see things when they fail. I've seen a lot of these uh, plastic timing chain guides, like most notably on Fords, but I, I, I've seen them where they've let go and broken. And, uh, you know, you take car apart with 80 or 100,000 miles and the plastic timing chain guides are cracked or snapped and uh, this is incredibly long wearing. And so if you're trying to build something that's going to last and something that's going to go high RPM, this will take all the abuse you're going to throw at it. And I just like this a lot better. I think it's the right way. And it's also what comes on all the Corvettes and all the performance like the LS3 and, uh, and the LS7 and, and, you know. Next up, we can throw the oil pump back on. I'm against high volume oil pumps. I think I'm against high pressure oil pumps. First off, high pressure oil pumps, uh, they just put a better, uh, stronger spring in it. And uh, I, I just, I, I don't see the need for them. Uh, high, they don't actually do more. So when you start losing oil pressure, the, the stronger spring on its own won't actually do more. It's because the pump is past its capacity from should be worn out and high pressure oil pumps won't actually do more at idle anyway they just do more up high and a lot of times people go after the stronger oil pump because they're chasing low idle oil pressure and stuff uh, the high volume oil pumps especially with the oil pan that we're probably going to use on this the high volume oil pumps will pump all the oil out of the sump faster than it can be replenished and it'll throw all the oil up on the heads and then starve the pickup for oil so I'm against the high volume pumps. I like the standard volume pumps and the turbo setup we have will have a restrictor in the feed line for it. So it won't, it won't like be, be robbing gobs of oil out of the motor or anything. They, you know, they don't use a lot, especially not a single turbo. And the oil pump gets torqued to the same 18 pound feet. So uh, that's pretty much everything on the front of the motor. Now we can put our timing chain cover on. This is the LMF timing cover that comes with the, uh, with the motor. This big hole, this little hole right here is for the cam sensor. But this big hole is for the camshaft phaser. We don't need this anymore. So we have a timing cover for, uh, well it's actually the LS2 timing cover. We've just cleaned it up. And uh, uh, where's our gasket? We're going to reuse the same gasket that was on this motor. It's a new gasket. So there's a thing about uh, the front and rear covers on the LS engines. The bottom of the block is, is milled flat and the bottom of the pans are milled flat. And uh, the bottom of the pan with the tin needs to be flush and flat with the bottom of the block. So what you do is you just put the front bolt cover bolts on loose 
until you put the pan on. When you put the pan on, you torque down the side bolts of the pan, and then you torque down the two front bolts that go through the cover to pull the pan flat up against the oil pan, or the front cover flat down up against the oil pan, and then you tighten these into the motor. And this way, it creates a nice tight seal, and you end up flush all the way around the whole surface of the block. And uh, we got to clean up and put our cam sensor in, but uh, that's the front of our MMF right there. Uh, from here, we can put our, 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 our lifters back in. And our uh, lifter trays. I'll, uh, put some pre lube on them just because we have them now. So why wouldn't we? And then the lifter retainers get torqued to uh, 89 inch pounds. Or uh, if you don't have a torque wrench that'll do inch pounds, if you're just doing foot pounds, it's uh, 7.4 or 7.5. I'll go to 7. And be very gentle with it. They're a very thin bolt. Just until it barely clicks, and that's all you do. And that's it. From here, uh, we just need for the motor, we just need to put uh, the heads back on it, and we can set up our uh, push rods, put our uh, rockers on and stuff. But before the heads go on, we want to change our valve springs. Uh, the Texas Speed cams comes to us with, uh, with a set of Texas Speed push rods and with a set of pack valve springs. Uh, the valve springs are pack 12, 1219-16. They're just little beehive valve springs. They're not uh, nothing too radical. Uh, they should be a little bit stronger than, uh, than what the stock ones are, but they should still not be too, uh, too crazy, nothing too crazy. It's, uh, it's only 550 lifts, so uh, this should still be able to last a while and live a good, long, happy life in the car. And that's where we're going to leave it for this video, is uh, cams installed, timing covers on, the lifters and lifter trays are in. From here, we need to, uh, we need to install the valve springs on the heads before the heads go back on the motor. And, and that's another video. Uh, for now, the cam is in and... Uh, Motor's coming along great.